All right. So this week for for the Duck Talk of Duck Duck Goose, we have an interesting guest. For anyone who might have seen the documentary called Behind the Curve about um, the Flat Earth movement, Mark Sargent was probably the most prominent guest in that documentary. Other people might know him for his YouTube channel or other interviews he's done, but we're talking to a Flat Earth specialist today. Armand, I don't, neither of us uh, subscribe to this belief. Not really, no. But I subscribe to fridge science and pseudoscience. I adore it. It's just fun, and I just love anything that thinks unconventionally. Yeah, I think we, I think we both agree that that being skeptical is important, and unconventional thinking is important. But there's also a level of critical thinking that's important too. We had a, a pleasant conversation with Mark. I mean, he's a, he's a likable guy. I don't think his rationale is always sound, but he's done his homework and knows how to answer a lot of questions. So. Sure. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right. Cool. Let's enter the flat earth. Okay, Mark Sargent, welcome to Duck Duck Goose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I've never been on a Duck Duck Goose show before, so this is very new to me. Well, you know, we believe in, in first experiences and, and, and we're here to talk with an open mind. <laughs> um, well, I'm, we're, we're both DJs. Um, I go by A-Track. My, my friend over here is Armand. Uh, and um, yeah, together we are Duck Sauce. And we have started this show recently um, and uh, sometimes we're talking to musicians and sometimes we're talking to interesting characters. Uh, I think you'll fall into the interesting character bucket. Mm-hmm. Well, he has, he, was, he has, we went over right before you came on the land. He has some, he grew up with some, some great music, you know, he's awesome. Uh, grew up with yeah, some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm one of those few. And some. He saw the records. Nice. I mean, so we got into a little music thing before you got on. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, uh, well, I, once, once I got through Praga Khan, Praga Khan and Lords of Acid, it was like, well, I don't mm-hmm. think anyone's really going to, touch them for a while. So then I, I kind of got out of it for a while, but I had pretty much everything they ever had, which was, which was oh, awesome. You said, you, prodigy, you said you were into the prodigy as well, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. The prodigy. Well, hell, um, you know, what got me into that was the, um, the hackers soundtrack. If you've ever listened oh, to that, yeah. I, I was like that every once in a while you run into a movie where the soundtrack just eclipses the movie. Oh, yeah. for sure. And, and I listened to that just as like over and over. It's like, wow, what the hell is, you know, you know, who picked this? It kind of like, the the Matrix did that a little bit as well too. Yeah. You know the first one. You know they they had their soundtrack yeah. was, was excellent, but the um, the hacker soundtrack were, with the Prodigy, I was like, wow, and that's yeah. That's if cool. I wanted to listen to mellow stuff, I listened to Orbital. Uh, if I nice. wanted edgier stuff, it was Prodigy, and of course, if I wanted to go back to my roots, it was Depeche Mode, who I think pretty much wrote the book on sound sampling. So. Yeah, New Order as well. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I recently got a book by um, the art director of Depeche Mode's label. I'm trying to remember the guy's name, but it's a, it was an amazing book. And it talks about also the history of the label and how they got to signing Depeche Mode and everything. I'll, I'll dig that info for you nice. after, after our conversation. I only got to see them once on tour because, again, I was so young when they, when they first came out. And then, again, I grew up in an island that was kind of like um, Footloose. Where you weren't you weren't allowed to do a lot of things. I mean, yeah, there were dances, but nobody really experiment. You know, nobody went experiment with music, and the concerts were down in Seattle. And so, but I had a chance to catch uh, Depeche Mode during their Ultra tour in uh, Denver, mm. wow. uh, cool. twenty years ago. So. Yeah. Anyway, cool. Yeah, All right, so, oh, so, oh, yeah, so go ahead, so, go ahead, let, go ahead, get going. I, I was, gonna, I was just going to do a little introduction, maybe do because up, I feel do. like you know. Uh, at least some of our viewers might not know who you are, Mark. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to summarize um, what you do? Who, who what the you hell I am? For? What am I doing? Why are we talking to you, <laughs> Why are you Mark talking Sargent? To me? <laughs> who the hell are you? Who's this weird guy? Um, okay, I am. My name is Mark Sargent. I am from well, this ballpark at Seattle, Washington, and I am the freshman recruiter for the current new flat Earth movement. And I've been doing it for five years. 
now. I, I made the Flat Earth Clues back at the beginning of 2015, which caught the attention of a book publisher and then a, um, a documentary team out of Los Angeles, which eventually turned it into, go figure, Netflix ended up buying it, which turned everything you know upside down. I saw the movie. Uh, yeah, Behind the Curve, <laughs> which was, uh, you know, I, I, what I predicted pretty much came true, which I said, everybody in the Flat Earth community is going to hate it, but everybody mm. else is going to think it's pretty, pretty interesting. And that's what happened. I, I sat in studio audiences in different film festivals or, around the country, uh, and everybody thought, like the first 20 or 30 minutes, didn't, people didn't even think it was real. Mm-hmm. They thought it was like a piece of docufiction. People were like, oh, it's like oh, this is a, this is a true. And then like after like 30 minutes, their, their eyes just, you know, and they're like, wait, <laughs> there's something really big and scary on the internet. I don't know anything about it. And then they, this, this, by, the, by the time the, fi- the film ended, you know, 100 minutes later, they had so many questions. And so, yeah, my YouTube channel, uh, doing pretty well. I've done, gotten, to, Flat Earth has taken me and, let me do some cool things that I never, ever thought I would do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do public speaking engagements. I did conferences in seven countries last year, which is wild. Uh, did a commercial in Melbourne. Go, you know, I wouldn't have gotten it without Flat Earth. And uh, yeah, three books on Amazon. Fun, fun stuff. That's what I'm doing. And, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Let me encapsulate. Um, I believe that we are living, the world is not this little globe, this rock sitting in the middle of this impossible universe flying around. We're just not, mm-hmm. and that our lives mean nothing. Uh, I believe we are living in a building, basically a flat enclosed structure with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960. And when they did, they decided to keep it a secret for as long as possible. And social media and HD technology changed that recently. And so we've been trending and it's been a wild ride. There you go. So let's, right. So let, let's, let's get into that because um, uh, there's, there's a lot of questions. And Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you know it's flat? Who built it? What about meteorites? Yeah, so on and so on. Well, so, okay. Yeah. So, so I, uh, um, I should preface that uh, 15 or so years ago when I was in university, I, I, did st- I studied physics and I took some astrophysics classes. So sure. part of me wants to, is, is going to want to uh, uh, go to that side of things. But part of me, another part of me is genuinely curious at how, how you've managed to uh, um, gather the the attention and belief of a lot of people and and yeah. i want to know more about your theory and, and sure. so this, this this isn't meant to be a, a you know a, a headbutting conversation no, this, no, no. there's a lot of, there's a lot of curiosity it, on all it, sides yeah. it's fine and trust me when i say this everybody in the community nobody likes flat earth when they started i hated flat earth nine months i mean the beginning of 2014 how i got into it was beginning of 2014 i'd looked about just every conspiracy you can think of i was i taught proprietary software for 20 20 years i played video games for a living for a little while and because yeah, of that I believe you're a, i believe you're a, a digital pinball world champion is that yes right? yeah right. way <laughs> way back in the day there was a japanese pinball game a japanese um, developer called little wing and there was an American publisher called Starplay and this worldwide tournament. And it turns out it was actually pretty, I mean, I'm really good at normal pinball, but digital pinball is like, you know, you stare at it long enough, you start to figure stuff out. Yeah, and I, was, I was great. And I won this tournament and it turned into a job. And that's how I got out to Colorado. And then I parlayed that into a tech support gig where I ran tech support teams for 20 years. And I never got married, never had kids. And so I had a lot of free time on my hands. And so I was going down all these different rabbit holes to the point where I pretty much had run out of rabbit holes. You know, I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. Some I liked, some I didn't like. Now, 9-11, some things you should look at. Did Bigfoot have Elvis's baby? Probably not. But... (laughs) But at the same time, you get to, you know, everyone knows about Flat Earth. Everybody knows about it. Everybody just kind of backhands it away, you know, pimp hands it back. It's like, just, just get, get out of here. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm not getting any younger. I might as well look at this damn thing. So I looked at it. And the more you stare at it, the worse it gets. Because you start realizing, you start looking at why you believe in things. 
you mm-hmm. you start realizing you take a lot of stuff for granted, and you be- we we believe there's a line from the Truman Show from 1998 uh, that we believe the world that is presented to us, and we mm-hmm. absolutely believe. Well, so there's a lot of people out there that believe whatever's on the news, totally true and unbiased, and nobody would ever say otherwise, right? And anyone that that has a you know has an issue with that, and only now only now can, we, can I say statements like there is no fake news. Everything on CNN is absolutely true. And everything on Fox News is absolutely true. Hmm. Try to resolve both those. Can't. It depends on what political party you are on. You can't do mm-hmm. it. So I'll, let, me, let me get into the why or, or the, um, the, the how I, I got into it. I'll, I'll fast forward to a physicist from Georgetown who was contacted by a German television team and they said, okay, we want you to talk to this physicist and we want you to give you your five science-y, best science arguments for the flat earth. Mm-hmm. And you guys are never going to talk to each other because physicists don't like talking. They, they just, you know, once you get a past your master's degree, your speech just goes away, except for like Neil mm-hmm. Tyson and Brian Cox. And so my, but the five, five quick points, ready? Mm-hmm. Here we go. Um, long distance photography. If the curvature of the earth, you're looking off in the distance. We all know that ships go over the horizon. They go off in the distance. You don't see them anymore. Why? Well, because they go over the horizon. They go over the curvature of the earth. That curve, according to mainstream science, is eight inches per mile per mile, otherwise known as eight inches per mile squared, roughly. So anything less than 500 500 miles, you can use eight, eight inches per mile squared, which means 10 miles is 10 times 10, which is 100 times eight. 800 inches. So there should be 800 inches of curvature at 10 miles. And it gets worse and worse, you know, because it's a, it's a curve. And so at 50 miles, you're looking at about 1,700 feet of curvature. Problem with that, and the reason why the game changed is because of HD technology. Beforehand, the boat would go off in the distance and you could never, ever see it again. Well, now, if you have even a remotely dis- uh, decent HD camera, you can zoom off in the distance and you can pull that boat back into frame perfectly. There, there, there is no distortion at all, you know, with HD, with HD technology. So, and we can do this with lighthouses, with bodies of land, and it just goes on and on. And people say, oh, no, it's refraction, it's refraction. I go, really? Because here's a couple oil rigs and just wonderful videos I could send you off of California where you can actually, you know, they're off at like seven, 10 miles. And what the amazing part about it is not only is there no curvature in front of it, the horizon is clearly far, far behind it. Well, there's, there's no optical effect that can do that, 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 that can change that. That's number one. Number two. Can, uh, can, I, can I interject a quick question there? Sure. Because sure, you sure. talked about boats, and I think it's interesting. Hmm. To your knowledge, are there any sailors who believe in the flat earth? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a whole list uh, of, of Navy guys, as a matter of fact. My, in I'm, fact, my first subject matter expert, and you can look at There's a playlist on my channel. The channel's called Just Mark Sargent. You can type in Flat Earth Mark. You'll find it. Yeah. Um, there's a subject matter. In fact, hang on. If I go into da, 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 playlists. The because playlist, sailors, sailors really understand the, the geometry of the Earth. and Yeah, they used to. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of what we know about the movement of the stars hmm? come right comes from yeah. telescopes, and in a lot of cases, it's, it's hard for me to imagine that a sailor would believe in the flat Earth, considering yes. that a lot of what we figured out through centuries came from their findings. Good point, and you're you're right, but a lot of it was assumed. That's you know, we're gonna, what, why do you believe what you believe? In fact, let me backtrack just a minute. Um, let's. There's a quote by George Orwell, the creator of 1984. Right? Mm-hmm. And he wrote this in 1946, I believe. And he said, it's interesting. He wasn't, he wasn't a flat earther, but he said, if you go to anybody on the street and you ask them well, how they know the world is a globe, they immediately, immediately will knee jerk and say, what are you talking about? We know. It is known. You know, Game of Thrones. It is known. It is, it's a given, like an algebra. And then, and then you push him on and you say, really? How do you know? And everyone starts getting upset because all of a sudden they realize that it wasn't that they knew the earth was a globe. They were told it was a globe. And there's a very, mm-hmm. very big difference. Remember, this was in 1946. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how mm-hmm. did everybody in the world know it was a globe in 1946? Because you just put those toys in every classroom. Just put that model. So all you have to do is put that model in a classroom. It's the most amazing positive reinforcement. But back to your Sorry, yeah. back to your ship guy. Uh, the, yeah. uh, the first guy that ever came to me as in, in fact, the playlist is called Flat Earth Testimony Shows by Subject Matter Experts. First guy was a 10-year Sparrow Missile System 
trainer for the United States Navy. Mm-hmm. He called me up out of the blue, completely unsolicited. And he goes, okay, here's the deal. He goes, we can target ships with a two degree beam radar at 50 nautical miles. We can see them with infrared at night and we can hit them. He goes, he goes, this missile system does not work until we, unless we can paint the target. So we paint the target with a complete straight line. He goes, we're blowing these targets up. He goes, but that's impossible because at 50 mile, 50 nautical miles, that's 2000 feet of curvature. He goes, how are we seeing these targets? How are we lining up with them? And he goes, not only that, he goes, he, he talked to all his other friends that were firing all sorts of other weapon systems, which ended up calling me. And they said, yeah, there is no firing solution in any weapon system whatsoever that accounts for the curvature of the earth or the rotation of the earth, otherwise known as the Coriolis effect. Never, ever happens. And I know every once in a while you'll see a sniper, you know, on CNN and say, oh, yeah, I had to account for the curvature. It's like, really? Because I got howitzer guys, tank guys, rocket guys firing 10 times those distances. Never, Wait, so are, ever. You, are you saying that you don't believe Coriolis is a real physical force? Coriolis, which is due to the rotation of the planet, and it and explains why hurricanes spin a certain way, why t- water drains in different directions on no, two no, 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 no. The water drains in different directions? Absolute myth. There's a wonderful, wonderful video. Actually, I do know that part of that is that I, the force of gravity is too strong for the water to always oh, drain no. the same way. But but Coriolis does explain why hur- hurricanes spin in the hey, direction that it There might be something there, but it doesn't... The, the Coriolis effect, We never one, we never see it in firing solutions, but the Coriolis effect... How can it affect hurricanes? I mean, I know they tell you that, but how can it do it if there's a wonderful um, video, a huge YouTube channel out there called uh, Smarter Every Day. I, I don't know if you've ever seen this guy. And he did a simultaneous, simultaneous test in the United States and Australia using a kid's wading pool. He wasn't going to do toilets or sinks or anything. Mm-hmm. It's like a kid's wading pool with a center drain and made sure the water was absolutely dead calm and made sure not to disturb it. So use food coloring dots instead of boats, popped mm-hmm. them simultaneously, double simultask. And at no point, he goes, the, he goes, the turn was so gradual, so amazingly gradual, it might as well not even be there at all. He goes, mm-hmm. so I don't know why, how this myth started, but it was brilliant. Anyway, let's, let's go That's to the next thing. one. No, the next one, you're gonna, this one will be right up your alley, and I'm sure you'll have a comment on it, which is gravity versus the vacuum of space. Okay. So what's stronger, gravity or the power of a vacuum? A lot of people say gravity. I say, no, it's a vacuum all day long. The vacuum will win all day long. Um, take, if you take a soda and you're using a straw to suck it out of a glass, how are you doing that? Well, because of the, the vacuum force you're creating with your mouth. If mm-hmm. you created a second floor above you, whatever it is, you turned it into a vacuum chamber, just a simple vacuum chamber, you put a valve right above it and you popped it, what would happen? It would be instant. It would be violent. The pressure would equalize. It's not like the movies, you know, where you get a little hole. It's like, oh, we only got two minutes of air left. No, everybody dies. The Hollywood writers just completely embellish that. The end of Aliens, where Ripley's like climbing up the ladder and there's things flying past her. No, no, the alien's dead. She's dead. The kid's dead. They're all dead. So if that's the case, because remember, we're talking about a law of thermodynamics, not a guideline, not a rule, a law, which is pressure mm-hmm. cannot exist to not non-pressure without a barrier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why didn't the air stay in your room instead of going upstairs? Well, because the vacuum equalized. That's, that's how it works. The gravity could not, does not stand a chance against that. Well, you probably know what the follow-up question is. When you go outside of your room, why is the air still here? And your immediate reaction, your reaction is going to be gravity. It is the answer to almost everything. It's got to be gravity. Go, you mean the same gravity? The exact same gravity that couldn't even keep the air in your room is keeping everybody alive out there right now. And, and it's a weird argument because they say, well, it's got to be gravity because we're still breathing. I go, there can be no other option. It's, and, and it's like, well, what other option could be? And it's like, well, because it's enclosed. It's not that you, you know, gravity is holding the, the air down. It's you're in a pressurized system. You're in a snow globe. Because, and again, you can ask this of any physicist out there. What happens when you get to the bleeding edge of space? Meaning when, when our atmosphere ends and space begins, yes. first off, you got to say, okay, where is it? And then what happens there? Is it just a few little molecules flying around? It's like, what are you talking about? You're talking about the biggest vacuum force ever, huge, pure vacuum. And I've even had people, they, they can't get past it. They say, well, no, there isn't much of a pressure difference. Like the ISS, there's like no pressure difference between the inside and the outside. I go, really? Because I've seen stories of people with a cracked airline window that just get sucked out. <laughs> And that's at 30,000 feet. 
So mm-hmm. don't tell me there's, there's no pressure difference. There's a massive pressure difference, and which goes into the ISS. How does the ISS, which is built out of aluminum and plastic, how does that even begin to survive the pressure difference? So, so you believe that we're in that what we see above us is a sort of dome and that the fir- firmament of, of, uh, of stars is projected? Yep. Yeah, yeah, you're living in a giant, everything up there is just a big HD television in one, one million K. <laughs> it's, well, who's, it's, who's, who, who's who built run, it, right? Who's who built it? Not, okay, not us. And by the way, I forgot to comment earlier, killer shirt. Absolutely killer shirt. Our oh, like, shirt? Yeah. Yeah, 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 the kiss yeah, one. Our, Sorry, I mean, yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, that is, that is a str- well, who's, who's running the station then? If it's a projection Oh, yeah. Well, no, that's a wonderful question. And I'm glad, well, glad you got into it. One, okay, it's not us. And that's the first thing I should qualify because a lot of people are like, well, we didn't build it. We don't have nearly the engineering capability. Like, no, no, we don't have the engineering capability. We absolutely did not build this. So who built it? You can only go down really one of two roads. I'm sure you know which roads those are. Uh, one is an advanced civilization that's much older and much more powerful than ourselves, which has been talked about in science fiction novels and movies forever. Or the divine which at that point you're kind of just splitting hairs because one man's advanced tech is another man's deity. I mean, come on, if a giant golden spaceship landed in Paris right now and whoever it is walked out, you'd have two groups of people. You'd have one group to say, you know, all the nerds be go, oh, they do look like Avatar, go figure. And you'd have the other group of people just start building a church <laughs> immediately. We must worship the blue people. And that's, and that's those are the two camps. So I tend to lean to... I can't really say which way, which way I lean right now because I mean, well, Mark, I, tell us what you think. Well, no, I mean, no, because I was, I was, it, it, I'm biased because I was raised in a in a in a Christian family. So, I mean, I believe in the divine, but at the same time, you know, I'm also a believer in tech. So, did God build this, or did God subcontract out the work? Because there's a lot, even most of your mainstream scientists will say, it's not that I just believe that it's flat and it's enclosed. I'm Mm. saying that if it's flat and it's enclosed, it's probably digital. We're probably talking about a simulation here. There's things that are happening in our world that absolutely screams simulation, but the general Mm. population doesn't get it. It could, this whole thing could have, there could be an exterior agenda. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, the double slit experiment, obviously, where things, you know, which is straight out of video games, which is we didn't even know when we were building video games what the double slit experiment meant, which means that everything behind me, if I'm not looking at, it, isn't being rendered to its fullest capability. You're not, you're not, it's shadow graphics, you know, uh, flashlight graphics. Um, uh, look up stuff like neuroscience and free will. That's a bizarre experiment where uh, the computers can basically tell that um, you're making a decision eight, eight seconds before you even consciously make that decision. So you, you don't want to say, okay, you think of a number, right? And you say three, right? No, you think, wow, I thought of three. Three is, you know, that's the first time it conjured up in your mind. No, your, the computer saw that you, could, that you chose a number of eight seconds ago, which screams predestination. So yes, sorry, short answer to your, your question. Yes, everything up in, the, up in the sky is just a giant ornamental clock that predates language uh, so when so when we say that the movements of planets and stuff that galileo figured out with, yeah. with telescopes where the movements of planets only make sense with um uh, trajectories that's tied that to a function- solar system yeah yeah you yeah. you're saying no we're just seeing a projection that, well, it's still, that it's still a projection. Well, no, that's, that's a good question. It's still a projection, but it is also being tied to... So, But the solar system is also part of the illusion, meaning whoever built this place at some point had to... And I, I talked about this in the clues. You, they had to get us out of the old thinking. You can look up. It's easy, easy to find on, on Google. Type in ancient cosmology and click on images. Every culture drew the same thing which was every, I don't care what cultures was, they all, even the Greeks at one point, they all built the same thing, which is some disc covered with some sort of dome. And then that changed. Because if you don't change that, if you're the builders, the creators of this place, if you don't change that, eventually people are going to start looking for it. So the, the most clever way is to just tell people there is no edge. There's nothing to look for. You can go round and round all day long. You're never, ever going to find it. So most 99% of the people are like, okay, they just, they just took it for granted. 
And so, and that's, and they had to do it before the, uh, the industrial revolution took off. Because remember, the most interesting stuff we've done has been the last 500 years. And once the internal mm-hmm. combustion engine was built, that's when everything changed. That's when every, everybody just started exploring all these different areas. And that's when the governments of the United States and Soviet Union figured it out in 1960. And they said, yeah, we're not telling anybody. And to your follow-up question, which is why not tell people? I'm sure somebody's like, why not, why, why, why not tell people, right? I have other questions, but yeah. Okay. Sure, let's, uh, let's do that one. If you, it, because civilization was built, it's not what the powers that be would have to gain, it's what they would lose. By 1960, our civilization was pretty much established, right? Everything was built, the concrete had hardened. If you try to change that, you're creating massive chaos. Um, education, uh, oh my God, everything with an ology at the end of it has to be rebuilt from the ground up. Economics, you'd have to suspend world markets for months until you figure out what the hell it means. And of course, the, the big one, which is religion, um, the, the five major houses, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, you're, you're, at, you're giving them leverage against science simultaneously. I mean, it it's, could be potential bedlam. And so they said in 1960, it was an easy choice to make. They said, nope. Nope, 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 when I tell anybody. We may figure out a way to tell people down the road, but there is no reason why anyone should know. There you go. I think part of what's tricky with these kinds of conversations, to be perfectly honest, is I do believe that some of the governments have lied to people, especially in eras like the 50s and 60s, sure. right? Like we know that the CIA did drug experiments on patients and MK Ultra and that kind of stuff. Right. But I think there's a level of what I will call critical thought where John Q. Public, like any of the three of us, decides to uh, question some of these things. And, and, and uh, questioning things is important, right? And, and uh, not believing everything we're taught is important. But there's a point where, we, where our sort of duty, our civic duty, in a sense, is to do the diligence and figure out this is I, – I believe this part was a lie. I believe this part was true. Right, right. So, um, but, okay, there's a few things that I thought of as you were talking. Okay. One, I'm curious, again, with regards to this uh, incredible planetarium projection dome thing yeah. where, we, where you claim that we see the stars and their movements and shooting stars and yeah. eclipses and whatever else. So, do you believe in, in history? Do you believe that the ancient Greeks existed? Do you, how far do you oh, go yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, that's a whole other conspiracy, but <laughs> yes, yes, I do. I, I want to know I, when, this, when, this, when this projection screen was built. Oh, God. Um, it probably is. It's not when it was built. It was what civilization was the first to inhabit it. So did like, you want to get into the, some of the bigger strokes, the, I do not think we are the first people to rent this apartment by a long shot. Remember our own, our unbroken history only goes back like 5,000 years, but mm-hmm. we know full well, I mean, just look at some of the, I don't know, any series seasons of ancient aliens, how many different civilizations are out there. Um, the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Puma Punku. Uh, that weird place in Iran. I mean, there's, there's all sort, sorts of stuff that say that there were civilizations before us. So I think what happens is, is that there are, the civilization, you know, has its beginning, its rise, and eventually, you know, it has to end. You know, everything has beginning has an end, and then they, you know, do some terraforming, and then a new civilization comes along. So how old is this place? Whew. I mean, it doesn't have to be... Oh, let's take it a step further. Do I think the carbon dating is a crock? Yeah, I do. Because people say, oh, no, it's hundreds of millions of years old. No, you don't have to need hundreds of millions of years. I mean, between those 5,000 year segments where there's civilization, yeah, you can do terraforming, but can, you can do it very, very quickly. You don't, you don't need to, to drag it out. So is this place hundreds of thousands of years old? Sure. Is it more than 10 million years old? I don't know why you need it more than 10 million years old. I mean, it depends what the lifespan. Okay. Look, I, don't, I don't know the engineer. You're, you're, you're not saying that this Truman Show was built like just for us. Oh, yes. Yeah. No. Or like God, hundred no. years ago, you believe that we humans have been here for a couple thousand years. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, we've got. Relics I'm just trying to understand the theory. Oh no, no, I, no. I, I, I have. Gotcha. I have the, one more question before I want to. I want. I want Armand to get some questions in too. Okay. But has anyone gone to the edge? Like, what's after? How come 
To mm. my knowledge, I don't think anybody's got to the edge of the flat earth. What's going on over there? I think, I think the military did. Back in, um, uh, and you can look it up. There's the wonderful video. There's a lot at the of things end. to look up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some wonderful stuff out there. Uh, there's a video done by, so, so what happened was there was a, an admiral for the United States Navy called Richard Byrd. Youngest oh, admiral in the history of the United States Navy. This is the, the Hollow Earth story. Yes, right? he was. Yeah, and that's how I got into this because I was looking at Hollow Earth and I was going and and you'd think because the room, the legend that he flew, he was the first one to fly to the North Pole in 1926 uh, before Charles Lindbergh. And supposedly there was this journey to the center of the earth type scenario where he's flying around. It's like, oh, my God, it's, you know, it's a whole nother world in there. You know, some sort of Hollow Earth scenario. Mm-hmm. And and you would have thought he would have kept going back. That's the part that bugged me. I was going, oh, well, there's got to be a follow-up to this, right? And I know that Charles Lindbergh, there was a follow-up where he supposedly went up there, but that ended badly. We won't get into that right now. And <laughs> Admiral Byrd, though, was sent to, to Antarctica for basically the mm-hmm. rest of his natural-born life. I mean, literally from 1928 until his death in 1957, he was just flying around Antarctica. He flew his own stuff for years, decades. So the question is, what happened down there? So what I think was happening was when they found the center, you know, eventually, I think everyone, there were some people that had really, really old maps that just said exactly what this place looked like. But until you have the tech to do it, you know, to start looking around, what, what can you do? King of France in 1500, you can't do anything. Guy with a plane in the 1920s, mm, start doing some stuff. So they're flying around, flying around, and in 19... 19- 55, his last mission was called Operation Deep Freeze, where he was just, it was just another routine mission for him. He just, oh, I think I'm just going to fly out in the snow again with my guys. And as soon as that mission was over, for some reason, everybody down in Antarctica panicked. There was all sorts of countries down there, United States, Soviet Union, Chile, Argentina, Australia. Mm. I mean, there was like all these countries down there and everybody got off there as fast as they could. And they put in what's now known, you can look at this PDF online, can't miss it, called the Antarctic Treaty, the only unbroken treaty in the history of anything. And in fact, it's not even up for review until 2041, which is so weird, that says that no, no corporation can ever go down there and set up shop ever in any country. In fact, when you become a country, you know, if you become economically viable, they put that in front of you. They say, yeah, sign this, sign this. It's like, why? I'm going to just sign it. So you think all the countries are in on, on this no, plan no, to no, hide? Okay. No, 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 very few. And that, that's a great question, which is because some people say, well, it's, so you're saying it's kind of like the Manhattan Project where mm-hmm. the United States was building the atomic bomb and there were hundreds of thousands of people refining uranium, boring. No, no, this is not one of those things. This, this, is, one, this is something that's so big that it is the, the example of need to know, meaning the, you don't tell anyone unless they absolutely know. In fact, do you tell the president? Probably not. Do you tell heads of corporations? Probably not. What you do is you go to British Petroleum and you say, yeah, if you ever think about doing exploration down there, yeah, this paper says national security, you're not going down there. You try to go down there after we, you know about this paper, we'll crucify you. And so very, very few people at the top, I think. I think a lot of people know p- bits and pieces, but almost nobody knows for sure. In fact, I think the one of the last group of people that knew kind of the whole thing were the Apollo astronauts. Because after they got back from the moon, they all became just freaking recluses. They drank. Wait, they, hold on. Do you believe the moon exists? Do you mean the astronauts went to the moon? I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get the theory. I'm trying to understand. So do, I, do I believe that the astronauts went to the moon? Do I believe yeah. the moon exists? As an image, yes. As a three-dimensional object, maybe. Did they land on it? Not a chance in hell. In fact, here, let me... Do do you believe the moon is a spherical object up on top or you're just not sure? I'm I'm just trying to get the whole theory. No, no, I got you, I got you. Um, Here, let me send this thing to your guy here real fast. So this is just a single image from... He should have it right about now. The... um, So just a single image from Apollo 12. I'm not even going to look at it. I've got it memorized. But you guys can pull it up on screen or do whatever you want with it. So okay. is it okay? So is it a two-dimensional or three-dimensional object? I don't know because not for sure. Because when you go to a planetarium, do you see the moon up there? Yes. Does it look spherical? Yes. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because it's just an image. So it could it, it could be just an image. I doubt if it's completely you know um, solid. At this point, but anyway, so this this image right here, this is an image from Apollo 12, right? Just a basic little image from Apollo 12. Mm. The longer you stare at it, the worse it gets. 
because there are so many things wrong with this shot. I'll just give you three. Ready? I won't even cover the fact that there's no stars in the background because everyone will say, (laughs) people say, well, it's an exposure setting. Fine. I don't care. Fine. You you, you want the stars in the background thing? I don't care. Uh, First thing would be, um, if you know anything about photography, uh, one light source, the shadows go in. How many directions? One. How many shadows, uh, how many directions do you see on that shot right there? At least four. So the, the yeah. point is, is that shadows can only, on, on down here where we are right now, yeah. you go outside the sun, supposedly yeah. a million miles away, the shadows always go parallel. They will never yes. intersect ever, ever, ever. In that shot, there's four, there's, the shadows are, are going to intersect. That can only happen in- I got one, one about the light of the earth. If, if you believe that there's a separate moon. The sun is lighting up the earth, so why you're on oh, the Oh, no, moon? The, the, the moon wouldn't, the earth wouldn't be bright enough. As a matter of fact, the astronauts were, that's a good question. No one's ever thrown that one at me before, which is, <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right, except that the, the, the NASA was really good about saying, oh, oh, it's this small, little, dull, blue dot. You know, they didn't, they didn't really highlight it at all. It wasn't glowing in the slightest, but no, it's not bad. But no, there's only, you can, you can see it in <laughs> the shot. good. Yeah, it's good. You can only, you can see the light the, the light source behind them. They can only happen if that light source is local, meaning it is really really close, thirty yards if that. Uh, second one in that shot is you see tons of footprints. Footprints, footprints, you know, they're all over the place, right? Because they're walking in this nice powdery ash, which is weird. It's like how deep does it go? I don't know. No one ever showed up with a shovel to even ask. It's like it's, apparently it's only that deep. Well, mm-hmm. all those footprints are there, but when you look at the capsule, there's that giant blast nozzle right there. There's nothing, there's nothing underneath. There's no blast crater. There's no splay pattern. It's like it was just set there. I mean, this thing has 10,000 pounds of thrust, and it, and it should have just blown ash everywhere. It should have gone down to bare rock, and there's nothing. It's literally like somebody just put it there. You could get more of a, more of a blast by taking a handful of sand and blowing into it than what was underneath that thing. I, I explain it. Nobody has any idea. If you're into engineering at all, this is one of my favorites, is that satellite dish you see there. Right? Mm-hmm. That, you know, that wonderfully, you know, splayed out uh, satellite dish. That's a 1969 VHF transmitter. This is not classified information, right? It's battery powered. Mm-hmm. 1869 batteries. It has a range on a good day of maybe 50 miles, maybe 50 miles. And that's Morse code. And this thing was supposedly pumping out 10 frames of color video a second, plus perfect two-way communication with no distortion whatsoever over a quarter million miles through the Van Allen radiation belts? No, no, it's, 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 it's beyond ludicrous. But the average person, the reason why they got away with all those things, and there's more on there, and it, 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 but we don't have time. The, the reason they get away with it is the average person, at least in the United States, I can't really speak for other countries, we were pushed through the education system, learning just the bare minimum and not, you know, nothing else. It's like you just want to get them through it to you. We want them smart enough so they can drive a car, go to work, nothing else. We teach them almost nothing about physics, engineering, chemistry, and this year, I don't know, microbiology and all sorts of other stuff. They would, people don't know. I mean, the spacesuit, for example, the, the space that you see there and people are walking around, right? Well, a spacesuit has a really big problem. I, in fact, I, it's a challenge I put out for three years. It's like, tell me what magical thing is in that backpack of that spacesuit that stops the vacuum of space. Tell me why that spacesuit doesn't turn into a basketball. No one can explain it. And the, the reasoning was brilliant because people don't know anything about physics. And so they... I agree just, with you on that, but people are not taught enough. <laughs> they aren't. They absolutely yeah. are not taught enough. And, and I get it. You know, when you're building an empire, you don't want people too intelligent. I get that. But they believe anything that they are told. And so in this case, it's like, oh, yeah, show them all these things. They're not going to question it because it's on TV. So there you go. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, so uh, no, uh, no, no, the uh, movie uh, is uh, horribly. That leads, um, yeah, come on. Just to, that leads into something that me personally, I love. Uh, pseudoscience, fern science, whatever you want to call it. I, I'm personally a big fan of it. Um, mainly because that it, um, like you just have science, you have academia in, you know, you have science and it stays, it's a structure, it's a system that's sure. built. So people, in a sense, like a six year old has a better thought on the whys of the world, you know, right. the, the questionability of, everything then i feel you know a, a, a veteran professor in a, in a science field because that 
something gets lost in the process. I, I do, I do believe that, and especially through just colleges and universities and the system. And I, and I get what it, why it's built. It's built to make sure that we want to prove this as, as fact. So they go, when you come up with something, it has to go through a rigorous process of everybody that's in your field for them to basically, they're out there to prove you wrong. And, yep. I, and that's that I get it and that's fine. But I feel like something's lost in that process. What, what do you think? So what my question to you is that do you feel that like I just feel like through through our history, through the history of humanity in terms of discoveries, that most of the big, big things that have made us completely do a turn from the way we see reality are were the people that weren't necessarily from the field. You know, they weren't from academia. They were uh, fringe, fringe scientists in a sense. Absolutely. Mad, sci- mad scientists. In their so, day. Scientists and, are locked in. They yeah. can't escape. Um, in fact, I've had people come to me and say, uh, yeah, I like your stuff, but there's no way I can, <laughs> I can talk about this. Because let's face it, especially nowadays, if you get your master's degree or higher in a physical science, you've spent a lot of money and a lot of time. I mean, if you have a PhD, I mean, and it's all about the goal. You know, I've, I've got friends that are PhDs. And when you get to that level, it's all about the community. It's all about mm-hmm. being published. Mm-hmm. And you do That's not true. want, and, and you will do anything to not be ostracized from that group. Mm-hmm. So other professions, you know, I've, I've got no, you know, pilots and engineers and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I've got people coming to me. I will, I highly doubt I will ever get an astrophysicist because yeah, your conditioning is just too strong. I mean, you are, you are, is burned into your head, especially again, any physical science, archaeology, hydrology, biology, geology, just you're, you're toast. But yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. And I feel bad in some cases when I'm talking to some of them, if, you, if, I, if I can get anyone to talk to me, because they- We're talking to you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean. It's sorry, it's like, yeah. find, find me like, whoa, oh, I, I'm sorry, I, I should end that story. So the physicist, you know, I gave him those, the, the five points to the German television team, and he was going to debate me. After I gave him those, those, the five quick points, two of which I, I rattled off here, mm-hmm. um, he folded. He was like, nope. Nope, we're, we're not doing this. And that was it. He backed out of the project, which I had nothing to do. You know, I didn't set it up. It was set up by ZF1. And, and, but to be fair, no scientist is well-rounded enough. They're so narrow path. You know, their specialty mm-hmm. is their specialty. Nobody likes deviating outside of their specialty, which makes it even worse. So if I ask them a question about uh, gravity versus the vacuum of space, yeah, they might be able to address it. Long distance photography, no. The temperature in the moon, no. The Van Allen belts, maybe. You know, they, it really depends on, on their field. So to find, and, you know, the, fl- the flat earth groups, we shotgun it. We fire off all sorts of different things at them. And mm-hmm. the, when it, they kind of get overwhelmed, you know, they look, it's like by the time they look at just half a dozen to 10 of them, they're like, yeah, yeah, I probably shouldn't. Plus, if you're a physicist, do you really want to be that guy? Do you really want to be that guy that gets into a flat earth? Because it treat it like a, a boxing analogy, analogy where if you don't knock out flat earth in the first round, they're not looking at flat earth anymore. They're looking at you. And they're going, yeah. Why? Why is he still standing? What's, what the hell are you doing wrong? Mm-hmm. You don't want to be that. You don't want to be that guy. So, All right. So, sorry, I ramble. No, no, it's good. So, I mean, certain elements of, of what you're saying might be hard to disprove. For example, the sky projection thing, right? Sure. Like someone could say, like I'm sure people have come at you and said, what about eclipses? Because eclipses mm-hmm. are predicted according to the, to the geometry of, of the stars. Oh, yeah. And they make sense with a solar system. So I'm sure you could just say, no, it's all a projection. And so it's hard to disprove that the same way that I could sit here and tell you, hey, Mark, guess what? I'm a lizard. How do you disprove that? Like there's certain things no, no, that are just you, like, but. You're absolutely right. You've yeah. been on a plane, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have. You went yeah. to Australia. You went to seven countries last year. Yeah. Are you telling me that when you look out the window of a plane that you don't see a curvature? I got something for you. I got <laughs> one second. You will like this. I don't know if you can. Play. I have a couple of airplane questions because as DJs, both of us, Armand and I, we've both flown a lot. So I have Here's, a few airplane questions for you. So I'll, give you the, I'll send your guy. So there's two things I sent um, Sammy. In fact, okay. uh, I sent him. I just sent him a third, which is uh, Neil Tyson. 
Okay. So the first thing I sent him was, you know, how science can get it wrong. And that was just the, uh, when you said, you know, when all, when science has a consensus, you know, yes. like, and, and so I sent him, I sent you the fish, which is the coelacanth fish. Love this one, which is every scientist in the world, every single one that was tied to this field in every way said, there's the fossil record. That fish is dead, 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 dead. He's been dead for at least 75 million years. Mm-hmm. Well, then the second shot. Basically, you know, they caught one in a net off of Madagascar and then Mozambique okay. and South uh-huh. Africa and the National uh-huh. Geographic did a special with them. Yeah. So how did science get it absolutely 100% put in a certificate you can frame wrong? Because well, they, they made... Yeah, a, the giant squid, too. The giant squid was a myth. The giant panda was but a science myth. Science is often wrong. We don't... We did the, I, I, yeah, I agree with you. But, science, is all, science is often wrong. I, the, the, it is. But, and that's part of the part... One of the things that bugs me about science is like, oh, it's absolutely <laughs> wrong. And then all of a sudden the fish shows up. It's like... Or well, you could, say, you could absolutely- say science is absolutely right until it's proven wrong. And Abs- then... Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with that. I just yeah. don't agree that the Earth is flat, but it's okay. Yeah, We're talking. We're yeah, having yeah, a conversation. Yeah. So, so, so what about so so on the plane? Let's talk give, about. I'll give you the airplane. The so, so yeah. I've had people literally tell me they've seen the curvature from an airplane, from a balloon, mm-hmm. from a mountaintop, and you'd be amazed how many people that have told me they can see it from the beach, not forward and back, but side to side. It's like a body of water. It can absolutely see the curve. It's like really. Really, you can't. Mm. That's when I send out Neil deGrasse Tyson, one of what he's the most popular scientist in the world. He's one of the, I guess, (laughs) he's basically a science jack in the box. That's all he does. He goes on stage. He is a cross between Bill Cosby and Sinbad. And he's got great (laughs) stage performance. And he's got great, I mean, he is. He's got tons of charisma. He can go out there. Very charismatic. And he does a little song and dance. He's like, science, right? That's what he does. Uh Great. Good for you. The problem was is sometimes he gets into trouble. And you guys remember the uh, the Red Bull jump from some years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, perfect, right? Red Bull jump. They go up to take a balloon up to 130,000 feet. The guy jumps out. There's all sorts of wonderful images of the severe, severe curvature, uh, you know, of him jumping out at 130,000 oh, feet. Oh, wait, the guy that jumped from, he's an Austrian guy? Felix Baumgartner. Yeah. Yeah, the, he was a DJ. Was he, was he? A D, he was a DJ? Wasn't Maybe, he? yeah. He looks I don't know. I just I, I know that it's some guy Bob went like, was, a, was a DJ back in the day. Like wouldn't was, surprise me. That would be I that would he, be like was, I think what? he was a DJ. Well, they have the same. I think he was a DJ. All right, all right. Why, yeah. why not? I mean, I don't know what he does in his in his normal quick. life. <laughs> anyway, so, so anyway, so at one hundred thirty thousand feet, he jumps off and he says, "Oh, it's severe curvature," and all these images, severe curvature. But they use this fisheye lens, which is a peephole lens, and it was just. Way mm-hmm. exaggerated. So mm-hmm. Neil Tyson goes on stage. It's a wonderful video. Seriously, I highly recommend it. It's very, very short. Where he goes on stage and he's making fun of this, this jump. And he's going, look, he's going, he, he said it's scientifically dishonest because at 130,000 feet, you can't see the curvature. And he's very explicit about this. He goes, you absolutely cannot see it. He goes, that stuff is flat. That's a big problem because that's 130,000 feet, well, which, you know, the curvature should be very much exaggerated if you can see it from an airplane, if you can see it from a balloon. And you're saying, and I've had people, I've literally gone to people, I'm going, I'm going, so Neil Tyson says you can't see the curvature, which is four or five times lower than what that is, mm-hmm. but you can still see it. Is Neil wrong? And people, I literally have people it's like, well, he's got to be wrong. He's got to be wrong. It's like, well, no, here's why. It, and it's, it's not that you see the curvature. It's, and in fact, I put the challenge out to some people years ago, and I said, mm-hmm. okay, you think you see it from an airplane? Fine. Take a picture with whatever camera, hold a straight edge at, up to it, whatever laptop, whatever you got. If you can still see the curvature, send that image to me. I will quit Flat Earth tomorrow. Mm-hmm. No one sends me nothing. It's not that you see it. It's that you want to see it. There's a big, big difference. It's straight, like out, it's straight <laughs> out of war. <Orwell. laughs> no, no, it is. It's okay, straight well, out of hold on. Mark. One thing, Mark. Yeah. I'm sure you know about because uh, there's a lot of pretty simple mathematical things that can prove the curvature. There's mm. the, you know the thing with the three wells? You yeah. know the shadow that I'm goes sure. into... The, if, there's, if, the, if the sun is right above one well, and then you have another well here, another well here. Right. Right? And then you just check the angles, right. and then it only works if there's a curvature. Have you tried... I'm just going to... No, 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 it's good. It's fine. Alain, but Alain, it, the, it's yeah. a, it's, the sun is a projection. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, I'm that's just. I'm trying well, to get. Oh, <laughs> and even no, my argument. My argument is this: I go look. Um, when it sure. comes to perspective and angular shadows, yes. and science is first one to tell you this. They'll say, "Look, 
you get the same sort of stuff if the sun is very big and very far away or very yes. close and very I small. That. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. Oh, by the way, I forgot to throw that in there. Uh, the sun is not 93 million miles away and hundreds of thousands of miles across. It is it's probably 3,000 miles away and only 50 miles across, which was a whole nother thing, because, and which is people say, wow, it's really weird how the moon fits absolutely in front of the sun. It's like, yeah, because they're the same freaking size. That's why. Anyone wonder why the eclipse shadow is only 70 miles wide and the moon is 2,000 miles wide? Nobody questions that. And it's like, well, it's, it's, it's condensing the shadow down. It's like, really? Then what happens when the Earth, which is 8,000 miles wide, supposedly, when that gets in front of the sun, why don't we see a big blackout zone on the moon? Why does the moon turn into an eyeball? Never, ever, ever see it. Sorry. So can I, I have another question for you. Yeah. Can you- you went to Australia. You flew to Australia, yeah, right? Yeah, Melbourne. So I've, and, and I've seen the model of the flat Earth that, that I believe you use. I yeah. saw it in the movie and yeah. on your YouTube channel. And so I, I know that there is a way for, for you to still show how, for example, um, you know, some of the explorers of the sort of Columbus era could have gone around and found sure. India and da, da, da. The whole Galileo like I, thing, yeah. Yeah. I've seen the model that you guys used to, to still explain that. Yeah. But as far as, so I've flown, I've been to Australia many times. They like DJs. Sure. They, they really like dance music out there. <laughs> so I've been to Australia over the Pacific, yeah. but I've also been to Australia over Europe and Asia. Okay. And when you flatten the model of the earth, yes. the distances don't work out. The same. Right. Like I've, I know the, the duration of those flights. Yep. Yep. Those flight durations could only work on a sphere. When I look at your model and I see that it's still possible to get both ways, but there's one way that's way longer. Yeah. Where's the math on that? I'm just curious. <laughs> no, no, it's a, good, it's a good point. And we know there are some perspective issues. Uh, I'm not the first one to say that we've got it all completely nailed down. Is there some sort of, you know, the, the big thing I try to tell people is, about well, two points. One is, which they didn't talk about in the movie, was you can't prove the routes, which is mm-hmm. weird. You know, I know you say one is much, much bigger. The problem is, is that, and a lot of people don't know this, when you fly off into water, and there is no island within 150 miles of you, your GPS goes into no man's land, mm-hmm. which doesn't make any sense, meaning you will go into approximated or estimated mode, meaning mm-hmm. they know kind of where you are, but they don't know exactly where you are. And, th- and this happens anytime, like if you're going from San Francisco to Hawaii or anything, you know, from Africa to South America or anywhere down the Southern Hemisphere where there's huge chunks where there aren't any islands, that mm-hmm. disappears. Well, how is that even remotely possible? Because remember, this is a GPS system. That's a military system with 32 supposed satellites with overlaying blanket coverage. Mm-hmm. Never, ever happens. When it comes, though, you know, and I know you're probably saying, well, well, even if the route was you shaved off this or angled it this way, the, some of the distances don't make sense in terms of time. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Is there a jet stream issue we don't know about? Possibly, you know, are they using some of the jet streams, the really, really fast jet streams to their advantage? And the plane is flying faster than it should be. Very, very possible because it wouldn't be going against the engineering tolerances. <laughs> okay, all right, but see, with what you're saying there, yeah. with all due respect, I think we're entering in a territory where the way science should work is exploring things, doing tests, and when everything converges to a theory, you start believing the theory is right. right. With the way that you are rationalizing the ways that the routes could work where perhaps the planes start going really fast, right. you already know your goal, where you're going to go to, and you're oh, trying yeah. to find the solution to get to that goal. That's mm-hmm. not really objective oh, research. I am, no, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Because, yeah, we have, well, we got to take a shot at everything, especially in my case. You know, I wasn't yeah. even going to make these videos unless I had some sort of potential answer for, for just about anything. Yeah, I you're, you're, you're equipped. I like this. This oh, is like playing, <laughs> like playing ping pong. I like it. <laughs> I've done this for a little while. But, but when it comes to, like, uh, to give you a perfect example, it's not that science doesn't do the same sort of thing, which is why when I was doing the clues, I used the core of the earth question. When everybody knows this, right? You know, and that is, you see the globe, you see the cutaway, and it's red mm-hmm. and orange and yellow and white. We've seen these drawings, right? Supposedly 4,000 miles to the core of the Earth. How do you know that? What's the deepest hole ever drilled? Well, it's got to be like 3,000 miles, right? Two, one, a hundred, 
10, you know, the deepest hole ever drilled is it's eight miles. That's it. Eight miles. They've never been able to, to, to breach it. That's 12 kilometers. Uh, can, can we try to drill a hole to like under the flat earth? And can we like get together and try um, to get and, to well, the No, no, that's side? a great question. No, no, no. Which is, which is, let me follow up with that, which is because people say, well, what's under the flat earth? How thick is the flat earth? I'm going, how thick is the earth? Because you can't drill past eight miles. So how hmm. the hell are you telling me what's down there? It's like, well, we've got seismic. If you look in the fine print of any scientific manual, especially in geology, they'll say, uh, we basically are just speculating based on volcanoes. But nobody, I mean, the Russians tried for years, the Germans tried for years. You can't get past eight miles. Why not? I mean, who knows? But the bigger question is, why are you showing us the core of the earth if you haven't been only drilling past eight miles? Meaning science took this huge leap. They, you know, it I mean, didn't even occur to you. Deductions. Yeah. Deductions okay. based on what? Very, <laughs> very, and, very true. Very true and, that and science is totally taking a leap on what's down past eight miles. Yeah. They actually yeah. have no they don't. Yeah. They, they don't that, have a... That is a, that is a Maybe fact. there's a rave. Maybe there's a big party down there, a big <laughs> rave. Well, but in, and not only that, and not only are they showing you that, but it's like, oh, here's what the core of Neptune looks like and the core of Pluto. It's like, you haven't even claimed to have landed on those. What are you doing? And, and again, science, I, I don't want to pick on them too much, but they make leaps of faith as much as anybody else does. And the difference is what ha what's happened nowadays is that if you're wearing a lab coat, you get instant credibility out there. We've seen this this year, that's for sure. If you're wearing a lab coat, you can pretty much say anything you want, and the, the press will will mirror that, which is like Bill Nye. You guys know who he is? Bill yeah. Nye, the science guy? Good guy. Yeah. Science. Nye, science guy, right? <laughs> Right? Okay. People, it's like, it's like oh, I've, I've, I felt so bad. I was being interviewed by these women, and one of these women literally had him at, at her wedding, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I said, I go, he's not a scientist. He's got a bachelor's in mechanical. He's a freaking comedian from Seattle. I go, he, he started literally with a Seattle comedy troupe. And what happened mm. was, though, some, one of the producers said, yeah, you know what? You have these angular features, put you in a lab coat, and we'll have you doing science. B Disney makes a little thing of it, syndicates it, and next thing you know, He's on Mars rover panels. He's on physics forums. He's on all sorts of stuff. It's like, what the hell? And I talked to producers. I'm going, why is he on camera so much? And they said, well, because mm -hmm. he looks like a freaking scientist. <laughs> so, well, I, I agree with you that the celebrity system and the authority we give to recognizable faces is, is, is uh, wrong. But, four, there's uh, only four guys in the world of physics right now that anyone knows. Neil Tyson, Brian Cox from England, Michio Kaku from Japan, and Bill Nye, who should not be <laughs> even in that as, group. As someone who studied physics, that saddens me. I agree that that's not how things work. There's only uh, uh, Anyway, let's go get ahead. Our, I know Armand had some other questions, too. Let's I just got a couple of things. Not, not too much. Well, one thing that has struck me in the conversation that we're having uh, now is that, like, I, le I read also a lot of very strange esoteric books, and I do my own kind of research and come up with fringe theories and just wild ideas myself. Sure. And um, what's it based in? Not much, but you know, it's just wild little things I feel from the gut mixed in with books that I read. So, mm -hmm. but the, the interesting thing that's come to light talking to you about, you know, the flat earth thing in a sense is that, so me personally, I'm, I don't believe in flat earth just so, you know, I just fine. feel like, fine. Fine. but I do actually really like the way of how you're talking about the concept of that. This thing is in a sense could be a constructed reality, right? Like oh, it is. So I have no, I have no you, doubt. We're born here in the sense when you're born on Earth, whether it's flat around doesn't matter. Yeah. You're born here. You're you're in a sense you're endowed with your senses, so sight, hearing, whatever, and yeah. we base our reality off those senses. Right. So, you know, it's interesting to me that you, in a sense, I, I agree with you a lot on that concept that um, we may be in it in a, in a certain theater for the senses, huh? you know, sense where there, you go. there are possibly where physics doesn't work in other dimensional states that are, are a part of this universe that we didn't have no concept of even understanding because we are in a sense trapped in something. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. part of your theory to me, is very sound to me because a lot of things that I have read in my days has been how much the wool has been pulled over our, our eyes in general and literally over our eyes, you know, because yeah. if you think about it, what you see, you deem as reality, 
the way a, a chemical reaction or whatever the case, you go, oh, that must be a fact. But it's just be built on something you were endowed with on this planet as a sense. Yeah. But who's to say other, if there's other beings, who's to say they even have these senses? Maybe sure, they yeah. have a totally different story, yeah. completely different than this reality. Yeah. Totally yeah. Not based on any of these rules or anything that we see or smell, taste, or you name it. Yeah. So human, that, human, part of, that part of your thing is, is, is interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. And and thanks, for, and that. thanks for that. Hum, yeah. Human beings are really susceptible to simulations. Um, I'll give you a quick example. When you're stopped at a stoplight, you know, you're in traffic, and you're zoning out for a second, and you see this on trains and planes, but in cars as well, and all of a sudden, the car next to you is moving, and you're wondering, is he moving, or did I take my foot off the brake? For a second, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. crap. Mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. human beings are, which is why flight simulators and everything at Disneyland and Disney World works so well. Um, the, uh, one of the things I loved so much was, uh, if you remember, not the Matrix, but the one that ran parallel to it, the 13th floor, which was I based. Seen that. Oh, you got to check it out if you get a chance. 1998, nine, 99, I think it was still I best year of the movies, 99. You saw um, it, Amar? I what? did. I barely remember it. He saw it. It's, uh, it's based on a 1975 German movie. The Germans did it in the 70s called World on a Wire, which yeah. was based on an original book from the 60s called uh, Simulcron 3, Simulcron Simulation. And mm -hmm. the whole premise was that as we were, because we're trying to aspire to do it now. I mean, every entertainment company would love to create immersive virtual reality. The problem is once you do it, as you're building it, you start realizing, you start questioning what is around you. And that's what, you know, we, we've seen in physics. Again, the, the double slit experiment. It's like, why are the same graphics techniques that we're employing in games, why is that happening around us now? And science mm -hmm. is like, it, it, they still won't answer. It's like, well, it's science. It's like, because it's repeatable? <laughs> that's why it's science? It's freaking magic. And you're not, okay, you're not, go ahead. What about the gyroscope thing that even comes up in, the, in, in behind the curve in the movie? The, the, the idea that with the rotation of the earth, right. Right? 15, like 15, 15 degrees, degrees per, yeah 15 yes. degrees per hour uh right? and, and yeah so in, in in the movie that that no one was able to disprove that so what's, no what? and actually that question doesn't well, most people don't even ask ask that question i'm really amazed you did uh because most people don't understand it anyway mm -hmm. uh, by the time i felt bad for the filmmakers because by the time they finished the movie they had forgotten that the most of the stuff that they were trying to they tried to stay away from the experiments but they ended up getting tied into it anyway mm -hmm. the, the average person on the street doesn't have a freaking clue what the gyroscope is supposed to prove or the laser is supposed to prove or so on and mm -hmm. so on but the gyroscope mm -hmm. is supposed to prove that something is moving at 15 degrees per hour yes is it the ground or is it the sky Mm. we say it's the sky and science says, well, it's the ground. Mm. And at that point it's like, well, who's we, honestly, I was never a fan of the big gyroscope thing anyway, because most people, most people won't get it. Even, even if it, it ended up for me in the movie being a push because nobody understood what the hell we were, they were trying to do anyway. So, but in my argument, it's like, okay, I think it's the sky. Look okay, at but when, when, when you say that most people don't know why they believe the Earth is round, right? Spherical, right? To me, I mean, you know, fundamentally, it's a problem with the educational system, right? Like, right. like uh, we're skipping over steps of the explanations and just telling people dogmatically this is what's what. Yes, but it we doesn't. But if you actually sit down and do the math, there are plenty of ways to mm -hmm. demonstrate that the Earth is spherical and mm. rotating, including the gyroscope thing. So you're saying viewers of the movie kind of uh, went over they, that they part. Just, by the time they got to the gyroscope, they had no idea. It was like, oh, wow, there's flat earthers doing crazy things. We have no idea. Yeah, but, but I'm to, saying, but, what but about your the point? gyroscope thing? <laughs> yeah, but the gyroscope thing. But, but no, no, let me, let me say, let me go with this, because you're probably, yes. the, circle back to the beginning, which was like, okay, why does this thing keep growing and growing and growing? Mm -hmm. The reason is, and I'm... What? I'm trying to find delicate ways to say this. We have created, I don't know if I said this in the movie or not. We've created a way of explaining the shape of the world that's easier than the solar system model. A lot easier. Because you remember the globe, if you have a globe here and a flat earth here, the globe can't even exist on its own. You know, it has to have a massive support system. It has to have a solar mm -hmm. system around that Sun, and a galaxy yep. around that. It takes, oh my God, uh, trig and calculus and quantum mechanics and all this other stuff. Whereas the flat mm -hmm. earth, 
just could hell it could be sitting on desk just a snow globe sitting on on bill nye's desk <laughs> right now and so you're saying but just That's like, up until Cop- Cop- copernicus humanity thought the earth was sure well no one realized yeah, that the earth was around the sun Pythagoras. Okay. Well, Pythagoras. Copernicus too. But it, the, the point is, is that you're absolutely right. Yeah, because people Copernicus held... Copernicus said that, that Earth goes around the sun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but by the time... And, oh, hell, even 500 years so it ago... It took us a while to figure it out. But yeah, yeah on, most of the population couldn't read or write. You know, the yeah. education system was archaic by, by yeah. comparison. So, it, but... And you're saying, just because it's simpler doesn't mean that it's right. Right. Well, no. No, it doesn't. However... People, I'll use the art of war line, which is people are like water. They always find, take the path of least resistance. It's a nice that's, way of saying that true. people are lazy. If it's I'm, easier, agree on that. <laughs> it's easier, they will. I mean, come on. I have deliberately don't send texts <laughs> because, mm. because I think we lost something in the process, but it's mm-hmm. emotionally easier to send texts. I mean, there's entire relationships that are born, you know, cradle to grave through texting. Yes. And, so, but, so that's why. I mean, we, we said, look, it's flat. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me throw one more thing at you, which is uh, the, the simulation thing. Back to yeah. Uh, uh, Armand. Yeah, the, yeah Armand. The, the simulation thing, which is every simulation that we build, whether it's Fortnite or GTA or Minecraft or whatever it is, is built on an absolutely flat system. It's absolutely tabletop flat. In fact, it's not even flat with a dome. It's a flat. It's like a cake box. Because computers can't draw circles. They don't know what to do. We can't even explain it to them. So we have to simulate circles. And it is, so why? Why would you, why would you build it absolutely tabletop flat? Because it's easier. And the, and the player is never going to know anyway. Because mm-hmm. they're so tiny and why would you ever even look for a curvature? The programmers, you know, they always take the, the lazy path. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. it's easier. We'll just keep it flat. They can build mm-hmm. in a curve if they want to, but they don't. Why not? Why not the same thing here? Well, I feel like you're saying that Easier means more real, but I, I disagree. I, I would say, I would argue that part of the reason why the flat earth theory is, is gaining momentum or popularity is that it's a way to explain the world for people who aren't going to put in year, the years it takes to understand math and physics and geometry. Earth for dumb so, people? Sort of. Okay, no, no, I got and, and I would I would go with you on that. Yeah, Earth for dumb people. Actually, that should be a t-shirt that somebody should throw out against us. Um, but and which is which is which is fine, but here's where, where that kind of falls apart. I at no point during my clues did I say, hey, everyone should grab their freaking cameras and go out to the beach and start shooting long distance. No mm-hmm. point did I ever say that. Mm-hmm. And then they started doing it. Well, and that's with that, that whole eight inches per mile square, that was not me. So you're, con- these people are convincing themselves and how, who am I to argue with them? It's like, look, in fact, they came back at me and my initial model actually had a few ripples in it, you know, cause it was kind of like a roulette table. By the way, people said, never, ever say the word roulette table because all the numbers, the roulette table add up to 666. I thought they were kidding. They're absolutely right. Go figure <laughs> <laughs> but, but they said no it's and table it's tabletop flat and i go really and they go yeah 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 and they and people just started sending me videos and videos and videos of all these objects they were shooting off the distance so it, it granted our our other explanations are fairly simple but when you have people going out there looking for the curve remember everybody hates flat earth they keep trying to disprove it if they're shooting off of the distance hoping to see a curve and they're not seeing it what do you think is going to happen but it's a problem of scale, and part of the reason why astrophysics is such a tough topic to even study yeah. is that our mind, our brain, has a hard time visualizing yeah. things at the scale necessary to understand planets. Yes, you're absolutely right. The, the term light year is absolutely meaningless, actually, in terms of yeah. numbers. Most because people it's, don't even know light, light year is a distance. People think it's a duration. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, but, but and, and you're right, when it comes to straight-up astrophysics... Which is what actually it's helps. It's really tough to grasp your, your head but, around it. But Terra, you know, but yes. down here, numbers yeah. are much more manageable. And again, we didn't come up with a freaking formula. So yeah, I mean, the numbers are manageable here the same way that Newtonian physics work in our referential system. And it took hundreds of years to get to Einstein or to get to someone to say, actually, when you get close to the speed of light, these rules don't work anymore in relativity. Da, da, right. da. So we can understand the world around us, the tangible world and the physical world in our scale of size, so, you know, things that are 
a couple of feet or a couple of miles long. But beyond yeah. that, it's hard for the human mind to comprehend Agreed. without years of school. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I, only thing I can tell you is that a lot of people that never finished even their bachelors started shooting objects again, n- far and away our number, the number one proof because it's so easy to do because remember water is absolutely level mm. is go off to a beach and shoot something, whether it be a lighthouse or a plot of land or a boat or whatever it is. In fact, you know, I'll, I'll send you another couple of videos, you know, not right now, but there's ton- we've done tons of experiments, everything from mirrors to lasers to just infinite amounts of different cameras, you name it. We, we've done it. I have, an, um, I have a, a sort of more general question for you. Sure. And, and, and we can wrap up soon if you want. Okay. But, um, part of what's interesting for, I think, for all of us here with this, the topic of flat earth is I, I feel like in recent years, flat earth as even a general topic and the idea of questioning something that's been, you know, assumed to be real for so long, I feel like flat earth became synonymous with skepticism in general, right? And, and, and it's become a sort of rallying point for people who don't want to just t- believe as fact what they're taught at school or by mainstream media. It's become right. a sort of counter, right? And it's, it's, a, it's a thing that people rally around if they're skeptical in general. I think skepti- skepticism is super important. I think all discoveries come from skepticism. Right. But I, I'm curious to know a little bit more about your concept of who's the they and like when did mainstream media start? Has, this, have, has there been a conspiracy for centuries of people trying to keep us in the dark? What's and I have a follow-up question to this, but okay, even for, okay. the, for um, this part, yeah. Li- lizard people, which you may or may not be a part of. <laughs> yeah, maybe a lizard. Uh, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> when it comes to the they, <laughs> yeah. uh, you could ask just about it. Let me backtrack just a sec because, y- yeah, you're right. When you get into Flat Earth, the, the one of the, and somebody asked me this recently, and it's like, I feel a little guilty. In fact, somebody said, are we responsible for what the hell's happening in the United States right now? And I'm going, uh, hopefully not. If you can get your head around flat earth, yes, you all of a sudden revisit just about every single conspiracy that you ever were on the fence of before. Because why wouldn't you? It's like, well, if the earth is a problem, then everything, everything. could be everything <laughs> could be a problem. It's like, holy <laughs> smokes, <laughs> the lizard people. Um, <laughs> who who is the, the highest food chain? You know, the highest of the, the food chain? Whoa. Uh, you know, I, I, I joke about that and I say you could ask any conspiracy person, give you your top 20 groups. Right, mm-hmm. whether it be the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, the CFR, the Trilateral, the Vatican, some Jewish cabal, the Masons, blah 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 blah. Who's 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 highest on the pecking order? Right? People mm-hmm. have no idea, and that's the brilliance of it. Because true power, and that's I can't remember who coined this. True power stays hidden. Is mm-hmm. the curse of being the puppet master. You can't be the puppet master and the puppet. You can't be in the spotlight and control it, because. Um, the, the saying is you, you never want to put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown. Mm-hmm. If people know who you are, you can be overthrown. Kings, mm-hmm. queens, presidents, dictators, they can all be overthrown. The true mm-hmm. people, you know, out of the X-Files, the smoking man meetings, they don't Majestic have... Twelve. The what? The Majestic 12, yeah. There you go. They don't have... Yeah, they may be 12, but you don't know who they are. You know, no. people say, oh, it's Gates and it's, and it's Bezos. It's like, no, those guys are new money. Whoever these people are, they are really, really, I mean, I would think even the newer money of them would be the, uh, the Rothschilds that cornered the, the British, the entire British stock market and, you know, woof, back in the early 1800s. They'd be very, we're not, very We're rich. not going to get into Rothschilds. No, 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 it's not. On this <laughs> we're, we're not. But, but when it comes to the high, you know, but even they are just players in the game. So mm-hmm. who's who's maybe, at the top? Maybe I'm 400 years old, and 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 you know, disprove that. Maybe I'm literally. Maybe I'm a thousand years old. Prove me wrong. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I pulled the strings. No, no, no. I, look. I, being, the, the whole being game flat, was like, yeah, being yeah, flat sorry, earth, I can't shoot down any theories like I used to, and that's both a right. good and a bad thing. Beforehand, it'd be like, it'd be like lizard people, get the hell out of here. But now, I mean, I've literally had friends come at me. You know, when I uh, they say the entire royal family are lizards. And I come back and, and then they say, what are you into? I go, I'm in the flat earth. And they go, get out of here. <laughs> I was like, what? Mm-hmm. Did you tell me the lizard right. thing? Right. So, so, uh, so, so, here, so the follow-up to that is yeah. this takes us very close to anti-science and to COVID even. 
Dun, dun, dun. I'm 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 very curious, Mark. As as we're sitting here having having this conversation, do you yeah. do you believe that the that the pandemic is real? Do you think COVID is a real thing? Do I believe there is something out there? Yes, I do. Do I think that they should have closed 160 countries for it? No. The reason I have never seen hysteria over something that seems so mild by comparison. Uh, the line I like to give people, because look, we're on month eight as of today, I think. And that is, you look at your cell phone, right? I don't know how many mm -hmm. contacts, I don't have a lot of contacts on my cell phone, but you might have a lot of contacts on your cell phone. Have you had to delete anyone on your cell phone because they died? Actually, I have, I have, I have uh, delete. They're gone. They're dead. First of all, I don't delete the the numbers of people who are dead. No, it's a personal choice. I have all right, friends who right. have passed, and it's it's a it's a that's a that's a, 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 a yeah, just a vibe question. But um, yeah, a I actually have many friends who have had COVID. One of whom got was very close to death and had double pneumonia for two months. And I know I have many friends whose parents have died for, from COVID. Wow, you would be the 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 rare exception. To where, I don't think so. Well, look, the mortality rate, let, let me put it in perspective. The mortality rate, I shouldn't even use the word because there are people who argued about that term. The death rate was initially advertised when we started this thing as 1%. 1% for the general population. And if you're over a senior citizen, 3%. I mean, that was right out of the gate they were talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. well, that's a lot of people. That's a huge amount of people. Um, in the United States alone, that would be three and a half million people. Did we get that? No. Did we get two million, one million, half million? Three and a no. half million, do you mean like if, if everyone in the country, because the 1% mm -hmm. thing is 1% of people who catch COVID, right? And it's not 1% of the population. Which goes against, and I, I don't want to debate this with you too much because, again, I, I know whole, this, yeah. it's a whole but, other but, thing. But I am but, curious but, because this is very current. No, 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 no I got gotcha. you. Look, yeah. every model that we ever did when it came to the spreading of how things spread, I, in fact, the contagion, a wonderful movie by Steven Soderbergh, you know, mm -hmm. basically the blueprint, but every mm -hmm. model going back all the way to the freaking seventies said the same thing. And that is once it got in an airplane, which is basically an incubator system, the filters yeah. in the airplane absolutely do nothing. That's why they banned smoking on planes. Once it got on an airplane, international flight, basically the whole world gets it in less than a month. It's that fast. Everybody, you know, people get off planes, they get on other planes, just, they sneeze, they cough and, and it spreads very, 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 very quickly. This was depends like a, on infection rate for for each for each illness. Yeah, but we didn't shut. You know, remember, we never closed the airports. Mm -hmm. that, it's, it goes absolutely against every virus protocol there is. The airports are still open. They never closed. Oh yeah, a lot of people didn't fly international. You know, they cl closed the borders here and there. But I can get on a plane tomorrow and fly. Yeah, anywhere. that's probably why America is is doing worse than the rest no, of the world. No, no, no. Look, look, they didn't even. They didn't even, for the entire month, you're saying for the entire month of January, where people are just spreading it everywhere, mm -hmm. nothing happened. And then February, it's like, okay, we're going to, it's, again, because the public doesn't know much about microbiology. There's, that's, it spreads way, 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 way faster. You can't tell me that only, well, what is the cases in the United States? Six million, something like that? That after eight months, we only have six million infected people Spread stuff everywhere. Sorry, I don't believe the. Do I believe it's real? Sure. Do I believe that there's that they're absolutely pushing the hysteria beyond boundaries? Why would you close down? Okay, let me throw one more thing up. And you might get upset at this. Can <laughs> you put a price on human life? Yeah, you can. You can do it all day long in corporations, in military, in just about every life insurance. Life, life insurance. life insurance is a real thing. Can so with that in mind, if the average age of the people that die are eighty, and kids, why are you closing schools? <laughs> if if the if the, the the infection rate or the death rate in, in children is like point zero 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 one six, why are schools closed? Because well, because you think they're going to spread it and go back to grandma that type mm -hmm. of thing? Sorry, yes. it's it's not enough. I did I if I, there isn't a person I talk to in my circles anyway, that would have shut down the country. We're dying out here. I, I mean, the United but States is... You, I, I feel like America is not shut down enough. The whole rest, <laughs> like Europe and Asia have handled COVID a lot more seriously and their cases went down. America half tried to handle it 
but never really did a true lockdowns like they were in Italy and in France, let that, alone in, in Korea. That's, that's and, because, and this is the shit show that we're in now in the States. But that's because nobody was scared. Until you, the average person on the street, until you have somebody, look, if the mortality, sorry, if the death rate is 1%, you know mm -hmm. dead people, you aside, you know dead that. people, meaning yes. the guy at the gas station, that guy, person used to be a wait staff, blah, 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 you know dead people. I have yet to, you're the first person I have well, I've run to. That knows dead to people. that question, Mark, I would say that there, there's an inequality in the demographics of people getting infected. And, and there's racial questions here. Right. Mm -hmm. I think there, 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 there's yeah. a white privilege question where white people have the luxury of having homes where there's not too many people living together. But certain um, certain minorities who live in, in more difficult conditions are piled up in houses or are working in the service industry and they're getting sure. more in the infections. There's, there's sure, sure. With that. that. It, with that being said, what happened in India? Uh, come on. <laughs> India should have just basically fallen over dead. I mean, I mean they I know, but it, it happened in Brazil. <laughs> Brazil's <laughs> the only country that's as bad as the States. Yeah, but even then, we're the, the, United, the United States, people in the United States will not, unless it hits home, and if you want, if you want to say it's a white privilege thing, it's fine. But unless it hits I, I, home... I can say something better than that. What? Could be that Americans, our cultural style of dealing with an outbreak like this... Mm -hmm. Americans are have a certain bit of selfish attitude, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And don't want to put in the work, which would be the sacrifice. Americans are lazy. That is true. Two things. So yep. what it is is our we're, that's ingrained in our culture. Our culture right. is kind of like Americans. We are people that like if I can take advantage of somebody, I will. Right. So what I'm saying is, is other countries don't have that in their base. Uh, and so when something goes down in their country, they go, we all need to help each other. Right. Yes. Right now, we Thank need to sacrifice yes. and we need to help each other. Mm -hmm. Americans are too selfish and individual. Indiv individualistic. Yes, exactly. So uh, at, this, at this point, is it worth destroying the United States? Remember, it's capitalism. This is our game here. Is it worth destroying the infrastructure almost entirely to, to save what exactly? Again, can you put a price in human life? Yeah, I can. Well, if we just did this right the first time, for mm. putting in a sacrifice, the, let's say a four month sacrifice, and then, then still, then you should have. Canada is still closed. <laughs> if you, yeah, if you believe that, then you then you should have then it should have been done right away. Exactly. But it wasn't. It was said, oh, in two weeks we'll be fine. That two weeks turned into two months, which turns into six. And all of a sudden, you know, the unemployment benefits run out and the stock market is an utter lie. <laughs> I have no, the NASDAQ hit right, record highs. It's like, it's like the NASDAQ is nothing. Well, that's but because you, the stock market trades on future business. No, no, no. So no, the no, stocks no. are saying, we think that in the next amount of years, business will be good. So they're trading. Uh, no, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I mean, we no, they're buying, they're what, buying, no, they're buying bonds. Bonds, I did a whole rant on this. Bonds is basically the government writing itself a giant IOU pumping money into the system. They've been doing it since mm -hmm. 2008. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's a whole other thing. That's another thing. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else I can do for you guys? <laughs> I think you've given us plenty. Okay. No, I, and, and by the way, I, I, I don't hate science. Not by a long shot. And I'm not necessarily... No, and, and, and skepticism is part of good science in the big picture. Where you, I understand yeah. that. I, I, but I do question when science decides to take, again, take those leaps. Um, science mm -hmm. is corruptible like anybody else. You know, people say that there's only conspiracies. And there's conspiracies we're willing to look at and ones we're not. It's that comfort zone. You know, we all know there's conspiracies in politics and business and sports and entertainment. And yes, even journalism and science. Science will cut corners for money. Uh, you know, lead paint, lead gasoline, uh, DDT, which is a mosquito thing, and all the versions of DDT, asbestos, which we're still paying for. And of course, doctors and scientists, which said that cigarettes are absolutely fine. <laughs> so don't you, yeah, look, scientists need Porsches too, and, and man is corruptible. Power corrupts. How's that? Power um, that's corrupt. Power corrupt, corrupt. Doesn't matter who you are, and so just there's a saying I like, which is like, trust everyone, but count your change. Don't just take mm -hmm. it for granted. All right. That's cool. <laughs> Mark, thank you for giving us your time. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you, Scott. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, if you need anything else or any resources, uh, let me know. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Cool. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye. See ya. Bye.
Okay, it's cool. Brother, man, 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 brother, man